Well, welcome everybody to this uh, Zoom meeting. Another education for me. Right, uh, start the meeting. Um, apologies. Do we have any apologies? Mrs. No apologies. Elwood? Yes. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Right, yeah. uh, Mr. Chambers, Mr. Brannigan, all those in favour say aye. 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 Public participation. There's no public participation. We didn't get any this afternoon. No, no, thank you. Any late items? There's no late items. We're going to do those items in workshop. That's where we got to. Right, thank you. Declaration of interest. Anyone's got anything to clear? No. All right, confirmation of the minutes of the meeting, 28th of June. I'd like to move the receipt of the minutes. Mrs. Metcalf and Ms. John Gurling, all those in favor, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. So that's done. Confirmation. Under announcements, there's no announcements. No. Right, we'll go to the reports. Page seven. Uh, monitoring report. Have a mover be received. Mrs. Yeah, Mrs. Metcalf, Mr. Allen, all those in favour say aye. Aye. Right. right, we will now go to page eight. No. Page nine. Nothing on there. And Mr. Roach? Page, yep. Did I see your hand go up? Yeah, no. Mr. Roach, yeah. Um, I see sort of on page eight and page nine to do with the, um, the promenade space. Um, and it says officers to continue discussions with um, Foxton Community Board to utilise the freeholding fund, freeholding account for the work. Is, is it pertinent to formalise that? Because we have agreed that we would put money into it. Do we need to sort of note that rather than having it just sitting there as um, discussions are still underway? Um, I thought we had formalised it, but I'll stand corrected. Um, it's not mentioned on page eight and nine. I see that. So, all right, I think we're wise to have it done. Otherwise, we'll come up at the workshop, then we'll take another meeting before any money is available. So why don't we, if we're going to do it, let's... But we don't know the actual amount. So is it wise or is it prudent to um, move that we spend the money without knowing how much money we spend? No. Mr. Clapperton. No, uh, no, look, and, and I'm just bringing myself up to speed with this. Um, I think until such time as we know the, the scope of the project and the cost of the project, it would be uh, not my advice for the count for the community board to I'm recommending to council an, an approval, approval of you know funding from the freeholding account. Um, best yep. thing is to wait for that confirmation of the cost to come through. Yep, yep. We've approved that it to come from the freehold account, but the, to have that motion, I think it would be prudent because we're actually policing something and spending money when we don't know how much we're spending. All right, is that clear, Mrs. Metcalf? You happy with that explanation? Right. Page 10, nothing, nothing else. I got one item I'd like to add to page 10. Last board meeting, we spoke of the flooding in Cook Street. And Mr. Clapperton, you were going to have the officers and we were going to talk or meet and discuss the, the flooding taken from Mr. Hussle's um, photo. And we were going to get something done with the staff. I'd like to see that on the monitoring report so that we keep it there and comes up front all the time. Okay. All right. You happy with that? So Chloe will add that to the monitoring report. Thank you. All right, that's done that page. Next page, chairperson's report, page 11. I removed it, be received. Got a second that. Mrs. Metcalf, all those in favour say aye. Aye. And um, right, we'll take them item by item. Most of it is information. Um, 
the resignation of Mrs. Um, Mrs. Elwood, not Mrs. Elwood, Mrs. Newland. Um, bit, I move that it be um, accepted and then let it go out to her, thanking her for her contribution to the board. Hang on, Dave is looking up somewhere. So do I have a mover for that? Oh, I've moved it. Do we have a seconder, Mr. Chambers? Is it open for any discussion? Anybody would like to add to that? No, all those in favour then, say aye. Say aye. That's for the yep. first paragraph. The second paragraph we need to discuss as a board. Yep. All right. The next paragraph is, do we replace Mrs. Uh, Newland? And um, Mrs. Metcalf has made a comment when she wrote to Chloe regarding it. Um, at the stage of board, the resolution is not to fill the vacancy. So do we want to open it for discussion or yeah, reasons why? Mr. Brannigan. Sorry, he'll go first. No, yeah. You had to get up and mute. Yep. Yep. Thanks, uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. I just, as I understand, in guidance for the CE, the only way you can fill a vacancy is a by election. Um, I think there's oh, some it's... talk about a, an appointee, but as I understand it, can only be a by election. Is that right, David? Um, as I understand it, Ross, yes. Uh, Councillor Brennigan, yes. Right. All right. Okay, that clarifies that. Oh, Mrs. Mecca. I was under the impression if you had less than 12 months to go, you could go in and get you could go and have a look at who who was the next runner up in the elections and not so much appoint it. So then that person would then take over. Because it's it's under the 12 months you can do that. If it was over the 12 months, you had to have a by-election. Yeah, we are over 12 months, aren't we? No, from from she resigns in October. Oh yeah. Okay, can um, uh, uh, Chairman, can we just leave that on the table just for the moment, if we can come back to it, and I'll just yep. uh, get clarification on what we are able to do or not. Um, there is a downside um, to actually um, going through an appointment process, and we've done it once before in Council. Um, I recall when um, Councillor, uh, I can't remember his second name now, um, Yeah, no, whatever, um, we actually brought someone on for a, a period of eight months and it was actually quite problematic for that person when they came on, um, getting, their, getting themselves up to speed um, on the workings of council. Um, in fact, it turned them off. It didn't actually, they <laughs> decided not to stand for council um, because of that. But I'll um, just, if we can just leave that on the table for a moment, um, maybe by the end of the this report, I can have an answer. Thank you. All right, thank you. Right, Fox and Tourism and Development Association. We do have a, a report and it's on page 13 for information mainly. Very successful um, breakfast, I thought. We got a good response. Um, we did a survey, Tourism and Development did a survey and the biggest thing that came out of the survey was um, they would like to have another meeting. So many of them couldn't make the meeting. So Tourist and Development are now going to organise an um, evening meeting at five o'clock. And um, that will send out notice to all everybody again. And I've talked to Mr. Milton from the beach and he's more than happy to bring his group in to um, make another presentation for the evening or after five, I think we were looking at. So that's the first piece of it. You see a copy of the survey, tourism development, launching their uh, promotion for boxing, giveaway bags. Um, the next page is a, a copy of, um, or just an update on spring fling, and a copy of the survey that we sent out. So just to let you know how we went and did it for information. So that's all I got on the tourism development. The next one is, uh, War Memorial, and we got Mr. Um, Russell to speak in there somewhere. He was. Is he around? Yeah. 
Hi, yes, yes. I just wanted to say it was a good meeting that we held on Sunday, the 15th of August at the uh, Fox and War Memorial Hall, well attended. Uh, the notes of them of what took place are there and, and uh, some follow up work. I don't know if you saw the article in the Chronicle, which seems to be well received. Um, and I've had some feedback, some favorable feedback um, from that article. Um, if I'm open to questions on anything that's in, in that document. Yeah, Mrs. Mika. Um, Mr. Russell, um, I see in the report that um, there could be a bit of an issue with your constitution and what the, uh, the district council um, on the wind up clause. Um, has there been any sort of work around with that or any follow up? Uh, yes, there has been some follow up. Uh, we're in the process of liaising with the Charities uh, Commission or Charities Organisation just to get a clarification of their, their, their wording. And once we have that clarification, we would then wish to uh, go back to Council with uh, the advice that we get. Thank you. No other questions? No. Right. While you're on the speaker, Mr. Russell, we will have the Fox and Beach Progressive Association. Uh, yes, so that's the next item, I think. And the, the report is pretty straightforward. Um, I would like to suggest you take it as read and I'm open to any questions. All right, are there any questions of Mr. Russell? No. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Yes. And we have uh, the board update from the deputy chair and that she's done in, in her role, uh, wildlife and uh, MAVTEC. Um, uh, Mavtech and Estuary Trust. Yeah, not wildlife. wildlife. Not wildlife. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I'll, I'll take it as being read, but I just sort of want to make some comments on my um, on my report to say that um, Mavtech has um, has been community had community involvement. It loaned out a radio. I was part of the little theatre prop, which was great. And um, at the moment, they're doing um, a reviewing their seismic strengthening. So that's very much on the on the forefront with them, trying to get that done. And you, Cole, are showing an interest in um, doing a filming project um, about MavTech, and it would be really useful to us um, to have it as a promotion. We could have it on YouTube or on our Facebook um, page. And not in the, oh yeah, from me, rather than from the, from the meetings, there's been a, um, I'm gonna say the word huge, but I mean, it's just huge in comparison to what we have with our visitors increase in the amount of groups that are coming. If they're bespoke visits, um, we have to come in as volunteers. They have a look around the, the museum and then they play a, play a movie, which is pertinent to their club, whatever their club is, or what their interests are. So that, that's a really good income stream. It's a bit of, bit of hard work from us, or well, more fun than anything, it's not hard work, but you know, it's involvement with volunteering, but I'm really pleased with how that's going. So it's, but then of course COVID comes and then all that stops for the meantime. Right. Yeah, so um, is there any questions to do with MavTech? Good question, yeah, Mr. Chair. Yep, Mr. Allen. Thank you, and thank you for the report too, Mrs. Metcalf. I see there that on page 22 that the business plan and strategic plan have been tabled, um, that, which I take to mean completed, and in that case, is it intended to share them with the community board? Good point. I have I haven't um, I haven't shared it, um, but I'll, I'll yeah I can do. I can actually send it through as a file to to everybody. Would you be happy with that, or does it need yeah. to be in public? Oh, I I, th I think it'd be useful for it to be in public. I mean, we we do have a very close working relationship, mm -hmm. um, and uh, in fact, uh, later on there's talk of a you know a letter of support that we've done for. Mm -hmm. Mavtech, we own the building, all those reasons that we need to stay closely connected and it'd be very good to have such important documents forwarded to the board so that we can see the progress on it. Yeah, that'd be fine. I'll, I'll get that seen too. Right. 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 And um, Manawatui History Trust, um, our big program, pro project there, the viewing platform, um, we're at the stage now, Doc have asked us to go and do public consultation. And um, I've done it first with Iwi, by sending them 
our, our letter that we've written, the plan, what we wanted to do, why we want to do it. And then the plan was last Saturday was for me to go door knocking on the, on the, the people that are concerned about from Hartley Street. But of course, that's not going to happen because of COVID. But I'm going to um, either post them tomorrow or wait till Wednesday to see if I'm on Thursday or week, because I'm busy Wednesday, to see if I can actually drop these letters in people's letterboxes. So then I know the postage just may be a bit slow. So that's where we're going with that. So it's a feedback form. And then we were going to have a public meeting on the 4th of September. So that will have to be put off um, to whenever we can be in public again. Um, Doc had a very interesting, um, Abby has had her very interesting talk. The biggest thing um, is the new white baiting regulations. And it's to do with times, dates and distance. So um, once again, COVID's made that a bit of a non-event because no one's white baiting. But that new, the new regulations with um, times, dates and distance is something that's going to come out, come out over three years, uh, two years, sorry. Um, the, um, the fishing place, Fish and Tackle, will have the new rules and regulations and Wildlife Trust have the new rules and regulations. They, they were very big, so I sort of didn't want to put them there. And we had a Fonterra visit, one of our, I think we go twice a year to as, as a stakeholder to check out what Fonterra are doing, how they're, what they're doing with their water, their waste. And from our last meeting, they've really listened to us and they're actually now realizing their water, that their, what they called clear, cleared water, which was milky white. Now they're keeping in a tank and they're finding it valuable. Now it's going out to um, farmers. To use as fertile, to use as irrigation. So that's a big, big plus for Fonterra because it means less going into our Manawatu River. Okay. So that was it, really, from um, Manawatu Estuary Trust. If there's any any questions, um, Mr. Russell, I don't um, know. I, no. I do have a. I do. I do. Yeah, hang on. No, no, you're not into asking questions. Sorry, I'm not asking a question. I'm making a statement. Oh no. Okay. No, you actually, no, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I better try and keep this right. Otherwise, right. I'll get I'll get caned later. Yeah. Right. Oh, no, none of board members. Any questions? No. Well, thank you, Mrs. Metcalf. That's great. The work. Keep up the good work in the job. Okay. The next Fox and Beach freehold account. Page twenty-three. Right. Is move it be received? Do I have a move it? Mrs. Metcalf, Mr. John Gerling, all those in favour say aye. Aye. Right. Okay, any questions arising from the freehold account? Yeah, Mrs. Metcalf. Oh, I just feel so bad asking all the questions. Um, probably is a typo, but there's a minus $39,000 underneath the bottom line for um, actual for June, and I did ask Chloe to have a look at it first, so she wasn't just asked at the meeting. All right. So we won't put that on Chloe at this part of the meeting this late in the piece. Oh, oh, I, I do, do I did send something through to finance, but I just haven't had a response, so I will get something back to you guys. Thank you. And I yep. think you also raised the Forbes Road extension. Yes, I did. Yes. So that, yes. Is, that is captured. It's now the 800000 the question mark I had, it was in there for 2.27 million for Forbes Road. That's been deleted and it's um, replaced with 800,000. Yep, I do believe that was through the LTP discussions that council so decided to, that they're not going to proceed with the full process. Why? Who's, who made that decision? If it was council, why did it not come to the board? I'm going to ask Mr. Clapperton. I think there will be a question that you should ask um, the two council representatives because um, I can't right. actually recall off the top of my head um, the reason why that. I think it had something to do with our um, overall debt profile um, that we had um, some challenges at the end of 2024, um, but I th I'd be guided by Councillor Allen or Councillor Brannigan in terms of what actually happened at the last meeting, I think, before we actually adopted the LTP. All right. You're the only one on, Mr. Allen, so you get the job. Sorry. Yep. And, and my job is we'll need, 
my job honestly is we'll need to get back to you. I think I, I can't recall that detail. I, I see Council Brannigan's there, but I I think we've got to get it right, unless you can recall Council Brannigan. Oh, I, can't I, I think I think if we get that confirmed and come back. Yep. We'll get it back. Right. Yeah. So at the next board meeting we'll have a yep. have it in writing why. All right. Okay. Any other question to do with the finance? No? Well, show us. Maybe we get to these Zoom meetings because that went through pretty quick. All right. Well, thank you all. Yep. Hold on. Hold on. Hold, Hold on. on. So, Mr. Got something to say. Yeah. If we just go back to the um, extraordinary vacancy that we've got on the board. Oh, yeah. Um, section, yep. section 117 of the Local electoral, electoral Act goes along the lines of the following wording. On receiving notice under subsection 2, the local authority or local board or community board must at its next meeting, other than an extraordinary meeting, or if that is not practical at its next subsequent meeting, other than an extraordinary, extraordinary meeting, determine by resolution A, that the vacancy will be filled by the appointment by the local authority or local board or community board of a person named in the resolution who is qualified to be elected as a member, or B, that the vacancy not to be filled. All right. You raised a question, Mrs. Metcalf. You get to go first. Okay. <clears throat> so, so, Mr. Clapperton, so basically that's saying is someone who's qualified. So the next person on the list would be unqualified. Um, so I've just spent the last um, five or so minutes trying to work out the um, what a qualified person is. Um, and it, there's nothing in the act to actually say what a, a qualified person is, which is a bit um, confusing. Look, if I recall, we actually did a point when I was talking before about the um, council vacancy that we had, we did a point, well, not we, the council appointed the next highest polling candidate. Um, actually, it was actually, it was in the Milanui ward, I think, um, some, some a few years ago. Um, but I, it, look, uh, I, I think probably if I can offer some guidance, um, Mr. Roach, if we can just get a, uh, a feel from the table on what their preferred option would be. If it was option A, um, I think you need to leave it, let it lie on the table until we can get clarification of what a suitably qualified person um, is. If the option is B, um, we can just proceed to a resolution. All right, I, to be a qualified person, you'd have to ask even around the table whether it's a qualification. Experience is the only qualification that you can get in a local body, unless you're looking for someone special. I personally would leave it as, you, as recommended. We just leave the vacancy. That'd be my thoughts. Just carry on with one less. All right, any other board, Mr. Gurling? And then Mr. Chambers. I, I would probably support that. My only passing comment is that, that Mrs. Elwood was our representative to the Wildlife Foxton Trust. I'd be happy to pick that up for the balance of our term. All right, thank you for that. And we'll accept that. Yep. Mr. Chambers, you had your well, hand up. My, Mr. Roach, my understanding is, is a qualified person is a person who put their name forward and their next highest polling person. That's my understanding. All right. Thank you. Yep. Mrs. Mika. You're on mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. unmute it. Um, the reason why I thought it would be a good idea in the first place was from our from our um, down in Gore, from our community board conference, there was one lady I was talking to and she said she hers actually was a by-election. It wasn't an appointment. So it was obviously longer than this year. And um, she said um, she she wouldn't have thought about it. She she you know and, and she's she's now a permanent member because of it. She loved her experience. But I do take on board Mr. Clapperton's thing. This is a very short period, and we only have meetings um, you know every two months. It I mean I don't know. She the, the person may not even want to come on at this stage. Things might have happened that's changed things. So um, I'm happy to go with what the board prefer. But I did it because I thought it would be a good opportunity for the next person in line just to get a taste in. But if Mr. Clapperton feels it's, it's actually more, does more harm than good. 
Mm. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. I'm just, I offered some observations. Oh, sorry, yes, yes. <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> councillors. Yeah, listen, I, I agree with the board that's spoken so far. I think it's, it's a short period of time. There's still four board members, six board members, including Councillor Aller and I. Um, for 12 months, I'm sure we can carry the workload. That's my, that's yep. my position. Right. Ditto. Ditto. All right. We still have the majority vote, so we still have both councillors if we have to, so we're right. We'll go with that. I rescind my previous observation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Clapperton, for that. All right, then. Now so, I'll, we'll... so before you move on, Mr. Roach, you need to go back yeah. to the report yep. and to adopt the resolution 2.3, the recommended resolution. That the Fox and Community Board recommends to Council that the vacancy on the board not be filled due to the, being, there being 12 months or less before the next triennial general election. So you need someone to move and second that right. and, uh, and resolve that. Right. -o. Thank you for that. That's great. I move that. I'll Mr. Second. Chambers, Mr. Gurley, all those in favour say aye. 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 And I did. Right. -o. These eyes are very faint, but never mind. We'll get there. Right. -o. Thank you for that. Right. Well, okay. Well, that does conclude the meeting. All right. Thank you all.